Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Team Modi Fun M2, 2, 2, 1. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video, what we're going to see is how we can work with the Touch Pro functionality in the Modicon M2, the one where we are using the PTO's functionality. So, let's go to the presentation. So, we are familiar with this so far. So, the idea of the Touch Pro is to have an additional movement when we are working for example with the mode velocity so what we're going to focus now is to see how the different configuration of the touch proof can work when we're using the mode velocity so let's continue with this part of the presentation yeah. so basically this touch proof um we we had the possibility to add an additional movement to the one that we are we are having but we also had the possibility to record the actual position okay so the touch proof will be linked to a physical input in the controller and uh, we should be able to assign this um input on the configuration of the pto As you can see here this da, da, da this part the proof activation is in the pto configuration and here when you select not use you should be able to see all the percentage i that you have available for the controller that you're using so in this case when you select the proof okay you can specify when it reaches or not which action you can do along with this mc touch proof underscore pto which is the function for the pre for the touch proof you have this one the abort trigger so in case there is an error something that you don't want in case you don't want to enable touch proof you can uh, abort the operation so let's continue with this the how to add this function block is very simple it's similar to the other function blocks but later we're going to see that there is some additional steps that we need to do in order to execute the other action or to add this additional movement when we touch when the axis touch the the sensor for the touch proof okay so so far it's the same as we have seen before go to the parameter, select the function blocks that we want for the PTO and here we can find this, these two, the touch pro and the board trigger okay, as you can see here on the touch pro function block uh, there isn't too much thing to configure but the most important would be the axis okay, we need to link this touch pro to an axis to the one that we have configured before and then we have these two, first and last position that will be linking to this window only um, selection okay and then we have the trigger level that will be indication from when we when the axis touches the sensor for the touch proof which will be falling falling or rising edge so saying this here if you're using the trigger level you have this true and false values that you can use here okay true the rising edge the false the falling edge simple then we have the windows only okay that require these two uh, position for the sensor this position will be linked to uh, pulses position okay so probably if you need to have this in degrees or in millimeters centimeters probably we need to make some kind of formula to define this now you can pre-configure these two values but if you want for example to configure that in a hmr something you will need to link a percentage md variable to those okay and in order to access to that you will need to select the instance dot the names that you have over here okay simple so far so good so what's the idea this image is from the help of the software so imagine that you execute the mode velocity okay we have already specified that in the past 
you can see over here. So this part, this beginning of this part should be this one. Okay. Which is when we have in the home position, then execute the movement. This part over here could be this one when it's reaching the proof sensor. So when you reach the proof sensor, it will activate the touch proof. Okay. And this touch proof will execute a move relative. And this move relative if go to a position that we have defined and it will execute the move relative. You can see here the X like a defined destination from the distance that I want to recover. Okay, so mm, this is a simple example of how the touch proof can work. So we are going to a velocity, then we see a sensor and then with the sensor with touch proof, it allows me to create like a different action immediately okay so if we continue with this we also have another parameter which was the window so the window basically is like a add-on feature for the previous one but it will only detect the touch proof once we are in this window okay so here, the same movement that we had, move velocity, each reach, or the object is in the window, okay, and then in touch. So, as the object is in this window that we have already defined, and touch the proof sensor, it will execute the move relative. Now, if the window is outside where the proof sensor has touched this, okay, you can see over here how the move velocity the position of the option of the axis is in this window but the proof sensor is not in that part okay the movement will be continued okay we're using the move velocity As you can see this is a step the second step is the same one okay this one is the same it's equal move velocity it will touch the proof sensor but as the window is outside the proof sensor, okay, the movement will continue and the move relative that we wanted, this one, is not going to be executed and the axis will be moving using the same move velocity. Okay, so basically that's the idea. Okay, and we can execute move relative or move absolute in here or another move velocity to change the velocity whatever you want this so let's continue with this part so now in order to implement this okay the the, the theory is easy uh, there is some stuff that you need to do in your code in order to make it work so the first thing that we need is the first movement okay the function block for the touch proof and then the movement that we need to execute when the touch proof is rich when the proof is rich so this is the idea so if we continue with this part so i have the move velocity for example in this part okay when it's busy so i'm doing this we need to activate the touch proof okay and when the touch proof is busy so i'll be waiting it will try to execute the move relative but here the important thing is this trigger if we activate that trigger even if we execute this more relative okay it will be waiting for the touch proof with the physical percentage i that we have defined it to trigger this more relative okay it will be waiting for this in order to trigger the movement okay this is what we need to do so Saying this, let's open different software, the basic. So let's just show you where everything is. Configuration here, we just need to define the pro activation. Okay, you can define an input. And here you can define the administrative touch proof. Okay. Here in the axis, you can define, and then here the position that you want. 
simple as that there is no complications at all now i'm going to show you uh, the example program that i've been working so you can see the different stuff so let's go to here so you can see the axis and just hold on here so i'm connected with the controller and uh, that's proof okay here so i have already defined some limits over here using some formulas okay the first the first position will be here and specify the zero degrees and the last position will be uh uh 3000 at 600 degrees okay and uh, you can also see the actual position of the device okay but using the touch proof let me just show you when you access to this recorded position okay so you can see over here i have added this mode velocity so it will start the movement of this device to one velocity a one velocity then this function block you can see over here this bc over here will activate the touch proof okay and the touch proof will be in bc this bc over here the touch proof i already specified over here will execute the move absolute but the move absolute that have linked to go to position zero to highest speed okay the buffer mode is 10 which is trigger so it will not make the execution unless I have the input for the touch proof already activated. For the touch proof, what I have done is to create this um, percentage M to activate the output of the controller, and this output is physically linked to the input that I have over here. This one that is used in the oh, no, high speed control now in the PTO here as a touch proof so what i'm going to do first is to check the actual position i'm just going to specify that will be the zero okay then what i'm going to do now is to start playing around with the touch proof so i'm going to execute the movement okay for the ba, 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 this one okay going to execute the moment for the move velocity so uh, the idea of this is that this axis will be moving in forward direction okay and then when i press the touch probe it will go in reverse as far as it can to the zero position okay so going to trigger this you can see it's moving but you can see here in the move absolute okay it's busy because it's waiting for the trigger so i will trigger this okay there we go and it has done okay so what we have done now is to execute or what I have done is this. Let me just show you again. You can see it. This is what I have done. I have executed this, the move velocity. Automatically, it starts in BC. Okay. Because it's trying to reach the velocity over here. It's going to be in BC. Then this BC will activate the touch proof. And this touch proof, okay, automatically will execute the move relative. But this move relative, move relative or move absolute in my case okay it's not going to be executed because i have defined as a buffer the trigger okay that's why if i haven't defined the buffer as trigger for example to abort as soon as this move velocity start it will execute this but this one will execute the move absolute go to zero okay so it's going to be useless this moment okay so 
this is how you can use the touch group it's very simple just remember to specify the window in case you don't in case you don't want it you can do there is no need to activate or define something in the first position last position for the window remember to check on the configuration that you have which is the input that you're going to use and then the sequence of the movements that you want okay another thing that you can do if you don't want to mess around with the amount of the space that you have is to use the motion that's table as i showed you before so thank you very much for watching this video and i see you on the next one Thank you.